We've got interesting development to talk about here. So I've been following a lot of this DJ Envy, Caesar Pena, um, property developing fraud thing that's been going on at the moment, right? And it's been, on my life, one of the most interesting things to kind of watch and to analyze or to see from afar. Because in general, the story goes um, that Caesar Pena was this property developing guy um, who's also unfortunately a uh, ex-convict. And he got done, I think, for fraud or something, right? He comes out, he changes persona, and he becomes a flipping houses guy. And this, I think, started, oddly enough, it started right before the pandemic. So these guys were very fortunate, but also very conniving. The whole flipping houses thing started during the pandemic. The economic downturn around the world started just before the pandemic. Everyone was trying to find a way to make money, to get out of the situation they were in. The pandemic kind of put a stranglehold on a lot of people who definitely didn't have any options to do anything, right? You couldn't move away. You couldn't go on a holiday. It kind of revealed, you know, the different, the, the, the benefits of having money and being able to be flexible and do what you want to do. And maybe people then think, okay, entrepreneur ideas, let me think, let me think of stuff to do. The guys are flipping houses come along and... In the black and brown community, for the most part, I know from growing up in a very poor neighborhood, usually the property developing or property ladder is one of the only ways you can actually ascend the class level, especially or the class system in the UK or just in general, just accumulate any kind of wealth really and truly because it's very difficult for us for whatever reason to get loans and stuff especially if you've got bad credit or you come from a particular type of place it's just hard to set up businesses people don't really have the financial literacy to do so but housing and property developing all this type of stuff we can probably do so these guys come in um Cesar Pena is doing the property developing thing then he links up with DJ Envy a celebrity in, in his own sense because he's the host of, of the DJ um of the breakfast club they link up together. He brings them on his fucking platform and then they start to push this thing of, hey, invest in us and then we'll make you money, basically. That's the idea. The idea behind it was that they had all these properties. You'd put your money into a pool and then they'd give you a return. And I think they said the return was guaranteed at like 30%, which is insane. No one could guarantee any returns, let alone 30. But they said, if you give us 100 grand, we'll give you 135,000 130, back. So obviously, if you're down bad, or even if you're just trying to find a way out of your current situation and you've got these savings burning a hole in your pocket and you want to make some money, quick money, and flip it quickly, you put it into these guys, you trust them, they're showing you houses and they're on building sites wearing fucking, you know, um, safety vests and shit and helmets and hard hats. You take them seriously. They do it, but guess what happens? It was all a lie. All that money that people were giving to them wasn't going into making the houses. It was just all going into paying other investors off and they were keeping the difference. And it wasn't even like they did the business to begin with, then they stopped. No, it was a Ponzi scheme from day dot. From zero, they're saying it was Ponzi scheme. So now, obviously, everybody involved with lost money is suing both um, DJMV and Cesar Pena. DJMV, in, in consequent times, has come out and said, hey, I'm a victim too. I'm not fucking guilty of this. But obviously, he is because there's plenty of content out that people have been able to scrape from his own social media and the site, which has now been taken down, which is funnily enough. They're, they're taking all the, you know, um, discriminating or criminating, you know, um, incriminating, sorry, um, pictures of DJ Envy and Cesar Pena off of their site, but everybody's always finding them because the internet never forgets. And now, because everybody's calling out DJ Envy and saying, hey, you're not a victim, you perpetrated this lie, and some people are even going as far as saying, hey, we wouldn't have known who Cesar Pena was if it wasn't for you. You brought him on your nationally syndicated, super popular morning show, right? One of the biggest shows in hip hop or in black culture, especially in America and you promoted them to us, it seems trustworthy. That's why we believed it. So they, pop, purp they, 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 they are purposely putting blame directly, obviously, on the scammer and obviously on DJ Envy. But then DJ Envy now is getting upset with YouTubers and bloggers who are talking about it because they're obviously exposing it and putting an onus on him, making him look bad. He's now doing the thing that I've never understood that people do when they get in trouble. He's now suing people who are talking about it. He's now issuing out cease and desist to Tony the Closer and the credit guy, who are two people who played an instrumental role in exposing him and his part that he played in this scam. And this is a clip from Chick's Move that talks about it. Absolutely crazy that he would do this. I don't get why people do this and think this is a good idea. This is absolutely insane. So let me play the clip for you so you can hear what they're saying. Bear with me a second as it loads here behind the screen and then we will continue. But DJMV is suing um, Tony the Closer and the credit dude because. They're exposing his role in this flipping houses scheme scam thing that he was a part of. It's absolutely probably one of the most heinous things and shambolic things that I've seen 
in my entire life. I swear to God it is. It's so heinous, so shameful, so shambolic. And I'm going to play the clip for you right now. Oh, DJ Envy has officially issued a lawsuit. No, guys, not to Caesar, to Tony the Closer. Now, after sending Tony a cease and desist letter to stop talking about the alleged real estate fraud, Tony the Closer has announced that Envy is suing him and also the credit dude. He said, breaking news, DJ Envy is suing both me and the credit dude for shining a light on his shady dealings with Caesar. Funny how the truth stings, huh? The credit dude, once Envy's business partner, saw the light and helped expose the scam. Now, we're in this legal maze, standing up for what's right. Now, that did not stop Tony the Closer from continuing to speak about DJ Envy. He actually held a Twitter space last night where he was talking with alleged victims of Envy and Caesar's real estate fraud scheme. He said, damn, today spaces had victims of the envy frauds connect and even discovered that they were on the same property wow Jesus. looks like envy is sending out these cease and desist letters to any public figure speaking out on the issue funk flex revealed that he was also sent a letter by envy's lawyer he said i got this from envy back in july you think he's gonna send this to rick ross now cease and desist the credit dude who was dj envy's alleged partner he spoke out last month to separate himself he said the credit dude is not involved in the allegations against dj NV or Caesar Pena in regards to the real estate Ponzi scheme they're accused of running. We've had a lot of clients try to lump us into their web of lies and deception as well as accuse us of being involved in their bad business dealings. Not only is it further from the truth, but I am also a victim of both their manipulative behavior. It's unfortunate when people you trusted hurt you, but to also think they only helped to throw it in my face. And once I stood up for myself, you filed a fictitious lawsuit against me. Not only will justice prevail, but they will be exposed for being the alleged liars and cheaters everyone is saying they are so there you guys crazy right absolutely fucking crazy i've never understood that that is um that is the uh, i forgot the actual term for it um there's a lady that they named it after where you uh, you know in an effort to try and you know get that divert the attention away from the bad thing that you do you actually bring more attention to it in an effort to hide something you actually end up getting more eyes onto it which is really really crazy but um it's just a common tactic a lot of these guys do, on, especially now that it's social media the way it is. You'd imagine they'd know once a cat is out the bag, the cat is out the bag. There is no effort, there is no way to really stem the tide against you. The only way to stem the tide against you is to be a truth seeker, come out, expose what actually happened. If you are an actual victim, present that case as thoroughly as you can and then hope the public of court, the, the, the court of public opinion agrees with you. But you can't do it through the courts with cease and desist and gag orders and shit and trying to silence people. It's just going to make you look way more guilty than what you actually are. Or maybe you are as guilty as they say. But the funny thing about this whole scam that's been funny to me to realize is that, you know, it's also revealed to me. It's revealed to me the power of influence and why influencers are probably undervalued. And I think that's something Gary Vee speaks about a lot, right? Gary Vee has a bad reputation for a lot of people out there, but I think there are usually some crumbs of gems of wisdom you can get from his content. And I remember him saying from the very beginning when influencer marketing was taking off and doing what it was doing, that influencers by and large are undervalued. And I think I'm starting to agree with that because I don't think that Caesar Pena guy could have committed this level of a scam or this level of fraud and, you know, scammed so many people out of millions. I think Tony the Closer, the guy who revealed this scam and kind of blew it up, he said that running total now at the moment from the victims he's spoken to and the people that are on the ground level who know knowledge of stuff behind the scenes, the amount they're speaking about from again think about it from maybe 2019 to now the total amount that's been that's been scammed 44 million dollars 44 million dollars is allegedly the final total and it's obviously still running because people still have to come out and obviously um add themselves to a lawsuit if they need be if they have the money to do so if they're still around because there's been some you know instances and reports of people trying to self-expire because of the stress of everything going on and because of the embarrassment and shame which is something i also didn't think about when it comes to financial scams a lot of it why people get away with it is because people who deem themselves to be smart and intelligent and maybe business savvy when they get scammed they kind of feel shamed right they feel fucking like idiots that like they got scammed and the last thing they want to do is get in front of a camera or put their name on a lawsuit and reveal how much they got scammed for because it makes them feel bad right that's kind of what some of these scammers kind of prey on but can you imagine someone like a Caesar Pena ever being able to run off with 44 million dollars 
plus of worth of people's money. I don't think so. He only did that because of his connection with DJ Envy. So that proves that influencers or famous people, people with clout, their value is underrated because people only trusted, which is weird. They trusted these guys only because they were from the quote unquote same community as them. They look like them. They listen to the same music, dress like them, all this sort of nonsense. And because this guy was a radio DJ, which is interesting because I think there's also another theory out there with people who are saying the amount of money that they were scamming from people, it just seems crazy to be scamming that much just to live a rich lifestyle because both guys, although they weren't super rich, they were rich enough to live that lifestyle of like driving nice cars, having big houses. So why would they need that much money to like do, you know, whatever they're doing? And there's a theory out there that says that maybe they were involved in drug dealing also, allegedly. That's the theory going around now. There, there is some sort of drug dealing arm to this business that maybe they were using the money to launder it through the building thing to then wash it together with the drug money maybe they're using the money they're scamming from the fans to buy drugs in the first place whatever there's some element people i think organized crime and drug trafficking is involved which is be absolutely crazy to get like a real estate rico and get a drug you know rico as well at the same point would be absolutely crazy if that happened but one of the real kind of alarm bells ringing which again i think is very much an american thing because i don't think we have it we do have it in the uk but when people do it in the uk there is a lot more kind of like that's a bit gross here we don't really have the same kind of you know culture around it but they're saying that dj mb's instagram may be one of his down maybe his um maybe something that, <gasps> that that will end up costing him a lot because they're saying how can somebody that is allegedly only a radio dj don't get me wrong a really famous one breakfast club is huge might not be as popular as it once was, but it's still a really popular show. They've got a really popular podcast. It does really good numbers on YouTube. I'm sure on social media they get a lot of money. And it's a syndicated radio show, which means it basically is played all across fucking the United States early in the morning. Cool. And I'm sure he gets loads of gigs out of that as well as a side gig. But if you go on DJ Envy's Instagram, especially before this this whole scam kicked off, maybe he scrubbed his account now. But if you went on it before, you would never know that he was just a rapper. You would think he used to play baseball or something or whatever because his life is crazy, right? He's got all these crazy cars. He's got all these chains, his crazy house. His kids look like they've never missed a meal. It's really mad. And then people are saying, hey, maybe this Instagram account will he be his downfall because his spending habits on Instagram don't match the job that he allegedly has or the jobs that he has club dj and a radio dj or radio presenter probably doesn't equal up to having like 17 bugattis and shit it doesn't really make any sense right so people are alleging that that might be one of his downfalls i think to myself yeah we don't really have the same culture in the uk we don't really have people out here flossing their homes or stacks of money, doing the money phone, doing all the cars thing. That's not really a thing that we do, especially in London. You probably shouldn't do it because if you do, like what happened to Molly May, that flipping um, influencer, you end up getting your house robbed the next day. Do you know what I mean, um, thieves and robbers and burglars and shit are always keeping an eye on those things. But it's just not something that people do. It's just not done. I think the most thing people do is maybe flex their lifestyle. So you see somebody, I'm flying to this place. I'm flying to that place. I'm staying in this place. I'm staying in that place. That is usually a very easy signal of somebody that has a lot of money and a lot of free time to do what they want but you don't really see people posting up with their trappings of their fucking riches and shit standing in front of rolls royces and whatnot it's just not something that we do um and i wonder why that is i really do maybe it's because we're haters deep down i don't really know but still um prayers to all the victims involved in the scam there is another sad aspect about it which is likely none of them are going to get their money back that's a really sad thing about it but at least DJ Envy and Co are going to be exposed for what they've done and we're hopefully going to get to a point where in the future people will be a little bit more especially in the black community or in the black and brown community people will be a little bit a little bit more cautious about just giving their money to people that are well known because they're well known because that is also kind of insane to give your hard-earned money in cash to people to invest in properties because you heard their name you heard their voice on the radio it's fucking wild they have no business, you know, under, you know, they have no business experience, no history, no nothing. And you're just giving them money because you trust them because they're famous online. It's fucking crazy. And hopefully this will kind of shine a light on that going forward. One can only hope.